Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video I'll be making a sort of winter wonderland guardian like creature. <laughs> I never really know what to call my pieces but that is what we are going to be working on today and so let's get started on that. The first step as you see me um, doing is resin casting. Now normally I show sculpting if I'm going to be sculpting a creature but in this case this is a head that I sculpted like two, three years ago and then I molded in silicone and now I make casts out of it which is just basically a copy of the original so I can use over and over again for whatever piece. And I usually use this type of head for when I want the mythical, ethereal, elegant looking pieces and so <laughs> that's literally what I call this head. It's the elegant fox wolf <laughs> so I'm gonna be using that one. Also, as you saw, please, if you're going to be working with resin, always wear gloves and a respirator. You do not want this stuff on your skin and end up having a reaction to it and you don't want to be breathing it in. This stuff is fun to work with, but it is toxic, so I just want you guys to be safe. You know, wearing your protection like you should be, okay? Okay. <laughs> PSA over. <laughs> I'm not sure if this counts as sculpting, but you know what, we're gonna say it counts as sculpting. So here I am taking some Instamorph, which is just these pellets that you melt in very, very hot water and they become moldable. And then when they cool off, they become a hard plastic again. And I'm just using those to make the feet. I would make it out of clay, but since they're going to be so small, I don't want it to end up snapping off the wire when I bend the wire since it'll be such a small amount of clay. So I'm using Instamorph instead. Once that is all finished, it is time to now build up the body. And for that, I am using quilt batting. And quilt batting is just uh, like sheets of polyfill, just really compacted. You can get it from anywhere. Craft stores sell it, Walmart sells it. I wouldn't even be surprised if Home Depot sells it. <laughs> it's just, it comes in these really long sheets that I cut into strips and then I just wrap it around the body over and over and over again until it's built up to how I want. Now you do want to remember when you're building up the body, you don't want to build it up as thick as you want the final body to be because whatever fabric you're going to add is going to add thickness on top of that. So if you build it up in quilt batting as much as you want and then you add the fabric, you might find that it's too chunky or it's too thin or something so it's just something to keep in mind but as I always say if you want to go for chunk chunk boy you go for chunk chunk boy if you want to go for thin thin boy you go for thin thin boy okay <laughs> we like all shapes in this channel okay <laughs> so that's just something to keep in mind I'm all over the place today guys how, how, how's it going how, how you guys doing let me let me know in the comments <laughs> Oh, what's this now? She getting fancy in this video. <laughs> I wanted to add fairy lights to the inside of this winter creature to make it look like, I don't know, like the winter night. Stars glistening in the fur. <laughs> I found something today. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to add fairy lights into this one. So I'm just taking the battery pack and then strategically wrapping it in the quilt batting and so it still looks like it's part of the body and it's a nice seamless transition and then I just take the fair lights and I wrap it from the neck all the way down to the tail but uh you know maybe don't worry about the bottom half of the body because I may have may not have messed up and, and and broke like half the fairy light so it only works around the neck and it, it's fine it still looks pretty right <clears throat> And since this was a resin casting and not a clay where I could sculpt a hole in advance, since I want to attach um, ice horns to this um, particular piece, I am using a Dremel to just drill out some holes so that I can anchor in the horns so that way they're not just sitting on top and it's more likely to break that way. It's always better to have them anchored in some way, either with an armature or um, just a deep hole where you can really secure them inside so that they won't wiggle around as much. 
Once the body is built up to how I want, it is now time to cut out the fabric for sewing. And I kind of have a go for it method with this kind of thing because I'm really not good at pattern making. So essentially, I'm just making a jacket for the art doll. But what I do is I lay the art doll belly side up and then I'll cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the body and I'll line it up against the legs and cut little slits so that the legs can slide through. And then I'll just spread it all out and then trim the fabric down so it's nice and snug around the neck and belly and then I'll just sew starting from the head all the way down to the booty um, with a simple stitch. I, I don't really know what the stitch is called but I just go back and forth all day all day long. I hate so so much. <laughs> And while I am sewing, I'd like to talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for curious and creative people. Being super affordable at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and featuring a wide selection of classes ranging from things like illustration, crafts, photography, business, and just tons more that I could never cover all of them. Since Skillshare has such a wide variety of classes, there's literally something for everyone regardless of your skill level, all the way from advanced all the way to beginner. There is something for everyone. And since I was working with resin on this video, I thought it'd be cool to mention a resin class by Katie teaching the basics of how to make resin paintings, which is something I've been very interested in for a while and always wanted to know how to do. And she did a great job of giving tips and just a guide of how to do it. <laughs> so if you're interested, the first 1000 people who click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare. And thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For the legs and tail, it's a similar process. I'll cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the limb and then I'll cut it so that it's nice and snug and I'll just start sewing, starting at the feet, working my way up towards the body and to join the body and leg fabric together, I will use a ladder stitch so it's a little bit more secure and can handle being bent and all the tension that I'll need to go through. Also, also while I'm sewing, this is your daily reminder that if you've been wanting to try this or you have some kind of art project that you've been putting off because you've been talking yourself out of it or been saying that you're not good enough and that you can do it, hey, you knock that off right now because I'm here to tell you that you can totally do it and that I believe in you. My dog who's running around in the back and probably messing up my audio also believes in you, okay? So you can do the thing. <laughs> I love you. After everything is sewn up, it is time to do a little trimming. Now I'm not doing it too much on this body because I want to keep some things really floofy, but I want to accentuate the body curves of this elegant fox wolf winter creature. <laughs> And for that, I'm using a pet shaver. Um, it's definitely a tool I recommend if you're going to be making a lot of art dolls because it just gets the bulk fur off very quickly and very smoothly. Like there's no jagged bits or anything like that. And you have a bunch of different guards so you can trim at different lengths. And it's just a very useful tool to have in your arsenal. But please, please know, and I showed the footage um, this time because I always seem to forget, you can always use just scissors. I started out with just scissors and you will still need to use scissors even after using a pet shaver just to get especially the legs looking um, really really nice so to get like a elbow joint to really pop or and you know the ankle joints and the knee joints to really you know accentuate and and show themselves under all the floof. So you're gonna need scissors. Thank you. 
Now I wanted to try to make like icicles um, that I wanted to come from the back of the creature, just like it winters is sprouting out of it. Um, so I'm trying, it's like Instamorph, but it's like Warbla's crystal art. And I'm not quite sure how I feel about it because it's more translucent than Instamorph for sure. Instamorph just cures to a pure white, but it's not as clear as I was hoping for. But it also has like an interesting, cool texture. Like when it's uh, cooled off completely, it's still like rubbery and flexible. It's just really weird. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I still need to do some testing with it, but it's not bad. And here I just organized a bunch of flowers and, and little trinkets and stuff that I wanted to add on the back of the creature. This is one of my absolute favorite things to do. I glue stuff everywhere on an art doll. It is just so fun. I, I, I'm not kidding. I absolutely love this part. Um, I, as you see, I usually buy like a bunch of flowers in white and then I'll just paint them whatever color I wanted. And then I just start gluing in any fashion I want. There is no rhyme or reason to it. I don't plan it. I just kind of go with the flow. What colors look like it'll be good here? What colors look like it'll be good there? Do I want a little bit of like a, like there I put a, a cog because why not? I put some icicles in places. It's just, ooh, I just, I love this part so much. It's so fun. You guys should totally do it. I just, because there, it's just so freeing. You just, you ain't got to plan nothing. You just, you go with it. You go with the flow and you have fun. I love it. Shout out to my roommate for making awesome like clear icicle horns that I just was having struggles trying to figure out how to make these and she gave the idea of making them out of UV resin and they just look amazing. So quick shout out to her. I love you. <laughs> But here you see me adding them to the head where I drilled out those holes earlier and to just make sure they're really, really secure because I just put in some hot glue just to make sure they were temporarily secure as I added epoxy um, and I just sculpted it around them and then textured it to make sure it blended in with the resin cast again. It's just, just to make sure it's really, really stuck in there. And the last step is painting. Now I didn't do too much painting with this one. I wanted to keep it really simple in the face because the prominent parts were the ice horns and all the trinkets on its back and of course the fairy lights. So I kept the face very, very simple where I just kept it all white and just did a little pop of color for the nose and the eyes. Um, but real quick, before I let you guys go, I would like to show off a few wonderful artworks from these two lovely individuals. If you guys do not know, I have a hashtag called KP Tutorials, where if you used or have used my tutorials or just my art as inspiration for something and you want to share it, use that hashtag and I will be able to find it. But yes, after these eyes are done, this piece is finished.
and this piece is finally done thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons thank you so much for your support it really means a lot to me and I could just never say thank you enough um, this piece should be up for sale at the time of this video going live so if any of you are interested links will be in the description down below for you guys and once again thank you so much and I will see you in the next one bye